there is a lot, like, I just don't want to sit on my soapbox, like, oh, this happened to me, blah, blah, you know, but I feel like it needs to be put out there. I feel like it needs to be said because like I mentioned, a lot of people see me and they just don't get it. They don't get it yeah. until they get it. Yeah. Um, even, you know, Mamba, you know, when she joined and, and although Mamba and I, and even myself and Dreadlock and, and Loaded, we all have different personalities, you know? their approach to to things are a lot different than than mine is you know i'm more so uh very outspoken very put it out on on the table i really don't care how you feel let's address it you know what i mean and so i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that but um even when mamba first started um she's a phenomenal skater she her patience is is everything. Her grace, her um, humility, you know. Um, so when she first started, she would see me and she would see the things that I go through. And she didn't understand why I reacted the way that I did at first. Um, she didn't understand until it happened to her, mm. until she experienced some of the things that I experienced. And, you know, even her coming to me saying, hey, at first I didn't get it, but man, I get it now. Yeah. And, you know, and so, and I feel like I used her as an example because, you know, I'm more so just, you know, out there flamboyant, loud, you know, I'm just not going to, you know, take anything. And she's more so of the opposite of that. She's more so uh, approachable. And I only mention that because we're on two different ends of the spectrum and she still experiences what I experience. Yeah. So it's not like it's a personality trait or, or any type of uh, personality issue. So you see that we are two different people, two different personalities, two different settings and two different you know tournaments and we are experiencing the exact same thing. Like that's, that's a, a huge, huge issue. Have you experienced similarities like picture day wasn't for you or any of that? No, um, pic picture day for me uh, is more, it, it was more so a time where I could just give back to the league. I feel like uh, roller derby, you know, most, most women in derby, we're, we're not really known for being, you know, prissy and, you know, really uh, just kind of worried about our hair or wearing like the latest makeup, you know. And so with me, I feel like that that is my my personality, especially I have a um, pageant uh, background. So I used to be a uh, pageant girl. So I was just always, you know, dolled up. I was just always, you know, just ready to play in, in makeup. And I know a lot of women in roller derby that just wasn't the uh, case. A lot of them really just didn't care, which is perfectly fine. But of course, when it comes to pictures, you want to be looking uh, perfect and feeling good on that day. So picture day for me was just the time to kind of make sure that my league mates felt beautiful. Although they may not know anything about makeup, they may not know how to apply lashes. I was there to make them feel beautiful and to basically just um, help them out. So picture day was never a issue because it was more so of me wanting to give back and show my, my league mates that I care about them and that I want them to feel beautiful about themselves. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, so I, I have another question and, and I hope that this isn't this, I hate asking this, but, um, but I feel like I want to, I, I just need to bring it up because I need people to, to hear you talk about this. But, um, I remember you posting, um, something about if you ever find my body in a tree, I did not put it there. Correct. And I think as we're coming out of this trial with, um, you know, over George Floyd's death and seeing, you know, I've, I've, I've read a lot of the posts and some of the reaction that you've had. Um, of course, Dreadlock and Loaded has been very vocal. Um, yeah. hearing, hearing those things, 
like I remember I went out because you weren't the only person that had posted something similar to that. Um, I I had gone out and posted right. something like, I'm sorry, but the fact that any of my friends have to say something like this is horrifying. The fact that you said it at all, and, and it's 2020, I think at, at the time it was 2020, um, the fact that we're, we're experiencing this trial and seeing what came out of it and that we know how much work still has to be done. I, I bring it up because I think I want people to understand like, why did you feel the need to say it? And, and what do we need to do to? So, um, I, I said that and I added a little bit of, um, Kind of like a kind of like a undertone of, of humor, although it's nothing funny. But I think I posted. I think I said that um, if you guys ever find me in a tree, please know that my big ass did not climb up there and and do it. You know. So I say that just because of my size. Like I'm not I'm not climbing in any type of trees. You know what I mean? Like let's start there. So I say I said that to say that. And I also said that just because you, like at the time you were seeing it everywhere, you were seeing just random black men being found hung in trees and the authorities investigated and said that, oh, well, they were already having uh, suicidal uh, thoughts or they were, they were uh, you know, wanting to just end everything. And it's just like, like, are you serious? Out of all the ways to go hanging, you know, it's just like even, even the, the history attached to that, you know what I mean? So I, I said that because at the time I thought it was necessary. I thought um, I needed to just say, hey, if that ever happens to me, you know, like I would, you know, I would not do that personally. Um, you know, I, you know, that like it, I'm sorry, I can't, can't even process it, but I said it just as a FYI to my friends. And I think that that's sad that I even had to post that. I think it's sad that I had to let my friends know, hey, if anything like that happens, absolutely not investigate it, you know, push for um, investigating it. And I feel like Black people everywhere thought to themselves, like, man, should I should I say something? Like, should I tell my family, hey, I'm in good spirits. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm gonna go for a walk. I'm gonna go walk to the to the corner store if anything happens to me, you know, and and that's that's ridiculous. Like we shouldn't have to, we shouldn't have to put that out there. We shouldn't have to say, hey, I, I'm not suicidal at all. You know, I'm fine. You know, I'm just gonna go down the street if anything happens. That's not the case. So I feel like black people everywhere at the time was like, wow, should I start letting people know? Like, should I start making it known? Should I start posting? Should I, should I start having um, the uh, buddy system with me? You know, even I thought about that. I'm like, I go for jogs all the time. I go walking around my, um, my neighborhood, you know, I'm like, maybe I should stop doing that. You know, so that's one of the reasons why I posted that because I'm like, first of all, I'm, I'm not climbing into any tree. You know, let's start there. And I'm definitely not going to hang myself, you know. So I feel like a lot of us was just like, let me put that out there. And then a lot of us didn't want our friends or even um, white friends to feel any type of way. So we'll, you know, put a little humor on it, kind of twisted it with a little humor, which is what I did. But I was being honest, like, no, if, if anything ever like that happens, that's not the case. And I'm saying it now with, with you know, with everything together, I'm, I'm, I'm in my right mind and I'm in, you know, like I'm telling you that that's just not the case. And that's sad that we have to do that. I, I think the heart, heartbreaking thing for me too is hearing as you talk about all of this and talking about how you don't want to make I mean, I keep hearing you say the same themes over and over. You don't want other people to, to be upset. You don't want your white friends to be concerned. You don't want your teammates to be concerned. But 
I, I, again, I just don't know how you're bearing this weight all alone. Um, and, and, and my hope is that people will start to hear some of this and realize you shouldn't have to be alone through all of this. You shouldn't have to make somebody like me or another skater feel better because you're hurting. You know, I, I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. And, and that's, that's also what I want to come out of this is for people to kind of get that wake up call and, and see what they're not, what they're missing. I mean, I think I, I used an analogy recently about, um, you know, you, you, the Titanic saw the tip of the iceberg. There was so yeah. much underneath that obviously people are missing. Um, I, I just hope that people start to see that and are willing to, to take a step back and, and try to make change. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely agree with that. I, I think that, um, that for the most part, like what I want people to walk away from this knowing is that everything that I've shared with you today is not just, um, just a fluke. It, and it wasn't just a Foxy issue to where, oh, they just didn't like Foxy. It, it wasn't a personality issue. Um, this is something, and these, my experiences that I have shared with you um, has been going on in leagues across the country for years. It's just that a lot of skaters of color may not feel comfortable. Um, they may not feel safe to speak up. Um, they may not have the mental capacity or just, you know, they may not just have that, that mental space to endure through all those things, uh, especially alone, especially being a black woman. Um, you know, we are taught to be strong. We are taught to you know, keep things to ourselves. You know, if anything bothers you, you know, don't don't let them see you sweat. And I feel like I feel like that is a issue all in itself. And that's something that I've I've had to learn. I've had I've had to learn to speak up. Um, and I feel that from this, um, the only thing that I wish and that I would want is for those that are watching this and that, that are reading this to think back to their own, to their own leagues and to see how they can make other skaters of color feel welcome. Um, to think back to certain situations where you saw something mm -hmm. or you continue to see something, um, the only way to make it better or the only way uh, to, to stop it is to say something, is, is to let that skater know, hey, I saw that. Not only did I see it, but I'm gonna speak up for you. I'm gonna file this, this grievance. I'm gonna bring it up at, at the next league meeting. You know, it's just knowing that we are welcomed. I think that's one of the biggest things because even um, as I was listening to your interview with Tracy, I had no idea the history of um, the facility that was located on Truce when Black women would come in, how they were just turned away. Uh, you know, that in itself, I was just shocked. So I feel like no matter how small it may feel to you, but being welcome and feeling welcome in a space that's not really made for you or in a space to where no one looks like you. Like it's it, it's extremely important to go out of your way and to make others feel welcome or to make others feel like, hey, I got your back. I saw that. That's not gonna happen. I'm gonna speak up. And I feel like that's the only way to bring light to this issue. And that's the only way to start tackling it. Yep. Thank you.